Hey guys, in this episode I'm going to continue working on the neck blank. Uh, I'll plane it down, do the uh, scarf joint, and uh, route the channels for the truss rod and carbon fiber. So I'm going to start off just by uh, planing down the neck blank that I prepared in episode one. Uh, I'm going to plane it while it's sitting on a nice and flat board because I don't want it to uh, move around at all while it's running over these rollers. So I'm shooting for 23 millimeters neck thickness, including the fretboard. And I'm probably looking at around an eight millimeter fretboard. So play it safe. I'll, I'll plane the rest of the neck down to 14 millimeters. Every time. So that's at the thickness I wanted there. So this is ready to be uh, scarf jointed now. So the way a, uh, a scarf joint works is that you have your neck blank. You cut diagonally across it and you take that piece and flip it around. And now your fretboard hangs well over that joint. Your strings will break at an angle. So that's how you get your headstock angle and your glue joint. And that ends up uh, giving you strong grains all the way through here so that any uh, string tension pulling up this way it doesn't have any grain lines to break because if you if you just kept your grain going straight your your headstock could break off along those grain lines so i like a uh, 11 degree headstock angle with the with the locking nut the headstock angle really doesn't make much of a difference in terms of uh, keeping your strings down on the nut but uh, I just like the look of an 11 degree headstock. Just to figure out the cut I need to make, I've got a thickness of 14 millimeters. So the, the adjacent side of the cut I'm gonna make, 14 millimeters divided by 10 of 11, which is 72 millimeters. So I'll just mark this on my neck blank. Give myself about nine inches for the headstock, which is tons, but I've got lots of extra at the other end as well. So I'll just mark nine as my starting point. And then I want to take that back 72 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that scarf joint that I, I marked. And I've just got a couple blocks here to prop it up since the edge of the neck isn't even. So that scarf joint came out terribly, but it's not a big deal, that's just the cut. Uh, I'm going to take it on the belt sander to straighten that out. You can see I I took the, uh, the off cut, flipped it over and put it behind, so now we have both faces in line. So we'll sand them together. So that ought to do it. We uh, take off these clamps. There you have what will glue up to be our, our headstock angle scarf joint there. And those are nice and tight, nice and straight. You can see what I was shooting for here is for that edge to be nice and square to the neck. Now when I clamp this scarf joint up, it's gonna have a tendency to uh, slide down or shift around. So uh, what I wanna do is just put a couple dowels through the joint so that when it clamps, it won't move. Um, I've got the locking nut here as a guide. And I can see I've got about a quarter inch on either side. So I'll start driving this into the one side, outside of what's gonna actually end up being the neck. And I'm just moving this uh, headstock piece so that it sticks up from the the rest of the neck a tiny bit and then I can trim that flush afterwards so there now we have 
our nice guide pins for gluing up the scarf joint. So we can start gluing and clamping that right away. So I've got all my clamps ready here. Um, I've also got a couple blocks I'm going to clamp side to side just to make sure that uh, these laminates line up when everything glues up. And we'll use a call, as always. I don't know how well that turned out until we uh, take the clamps off and start carving it. Now I'll just go ahead and take off these clamps. There we have our scarf joint. Looks like everything lined up really well. And really tight glue seams on it. So I'm just going to take the face of the neck on the belt sander a little bit, uh, just carefully to get rid of this little section that's higher from where we glued it up. And there's that overhang. And that ought to do it. Nice and smooth. So just to prep for truss rod and carbon fiber routing, I'm just going to mark off where the uh, truss rod ends here. Also, where it is slightly wider than the rest. I'll also mark where the locking nut would end, because I don't want my carbon fiber underneath the locking nut, because of the screws that come through. They'll end up digging into the carbon fiber, which I don't really want. So I've got my neck clamped down with a guide rail here, uh, and the guide rail will help me just route that channel straight. And I've got a stop block here set up so that the router will stop exactly where I want the end of the truss rod to go. So go ahead and route that. So I've just switched to the round-ended routing bit so I can route the little section for the, the end of the truss rod. we go. Nice and tight flush fit. So I've just moved my guides a bit over and they're just ever so slightly tilted such that the carbon fiber rods will, will follow the edge of the neck slightly rather than being perfectly parallel to the uh, truss rod. And I've got it so it's, it's just almost touching the truss rod at the uh, headstock. So I'll go ahead and start routing that channel now. There, that's the depth we want. And we just have to do this on the other side now. There. That does that one. So you can see our routes are done for our truss rod and our two carbon fiber channels there. Now just for the sake of completeness, I'm gonna glue the carbon fiber rods in. Um, I've done it before with epoxy. I'm going to use uh, super glue. It bonds well to carbon fiber and wood and it dries quick and it's, it's easy to use so might as well. Uh, other people have had good results with it too so I'll go ahead. Now this is actually a good time to start working on the fretboard.